Today on the program, we are making what I'm mostly just going to refer to as an English IPA. For these reasons, I have Chevalier malt, which I have used a number of times in the past. I had a most of a sack left at my house from a collaborative brew day that we did here, so I thought, you know what, let me just make something with this. So I'm using 13 pounds of that. I'm going to bitter it with Target, and then... The other sort of experimental side that is tied into this Italian pills I just made is will a hop stand done with the lower alpha acid kind of hops, in this case East Kent Goldings and Fuggles, do four ounces, will that give a decent amount of flavor and or aroma to a beer like this? My Italian pills with my 5 ounce of dry hop did not have the hop aroma that I would have hoped for. So this is going to be an experiment with this uh, English IP I'm calling it. I'm aiming for in the 1060s with my grain bill. The Chevalier malt could be a little bit of sweeter on the sweeter side. So I'm hoping to bitter it enough with the target. And I'm hoping it's going to actually extract some bitterness from the hops from the hop stand. I'm going to use Imperial Voyager yeast. We'll talk about that in a minute. And right now, I'm collecting the, the runnings. It, uh, it's looking good so far. I will hold it overnight as I am wont to do and boil it up in the morning, chill it down, pitch the yeast, and then four weeks or so, we'll be tasting it. So, for this English IPA type thing, I'm using the Imperial Yeast Voyager, which I believe is a English derived yeast. I have to look that up. I have the yeast starter cooling down and we're gonna get it pitched and runner overnight and use it tomorrow. So I don't know if this gives me a lot of great information of where it comes from, ranging from old school ESPs to modern IPAs, uh, nutty flavors, which kind of makes you think of England. Apricot and peach at higher temps. Temperate 64 to 74, so I should be able to accommodate that. What I wanted to do is that earlier shot I just did was only like an hour, hour and a half ago. And look at this business. I mean, that's... That's something. That went from... That went from 0 to 60 real quick. So that is good. Should be good for tomorrow. We have come through the long winter. Finally. Some nice weather. And some brewing happening. So, I just finished the boil. And for no particular reason I decided to do the East... Uh, well, UK Kent Goldings first. Into the hop stand process. So, there goes one ounce, and there goes the second ounce. I'll leave this in for 15 minutes. I'll put the lid kind of loosely over here, and then I will see what the temp is, or else I'll just put in the fuggles and give them 15 minutes. My chicken person came through. I have a few eggs and they have 13 pounds of uh, wet grain. So, good stuff. Alright, it's been about 17 minutes. It's 187, so not all the way down to 180, but it's cooling off. I did have the lid loosely placed. So, we're going to go ahead and do round two. of the hop stand and again the goal is to see if I get not only some flavor some nice hop flavor to go with this really sweet kind of base malt but also maybe and hopefully some hop aroma so it's uh, right around 1060 maybe 1059 or so I got 
just under five gallons. I boiled it for 10 minutes before adding the hops because I thought I had kind of a high amount of volume and maybe that was responsible for getting just under five gallons. Whatever, after I put the yeast starter in there, it's back up to five gallons. This is the color that we're looking at right now. There's all the hops, 5.25 ounces total. And got the yeast pitched, so this beer shouldn't take too long to ferment out and throw on tap as soon as I get the next opening, which will probably be this one. And when that is gone and this one's ready, we'll keg it up and see how it t turned out. All right, so what do we got here? All right, people, we are gonna try this beer that you have seen being made. Uh, first of all, welcome to the program, Beth, thank you for joining us, and Barry, hey. that you um, will see in some Chop and Brew videos yeah, I've been, uh, I've been in a from here and there. Milwaukee, yeah, Milwaukee in town for a brewing fundraiser event tomorrow. So, this beer finished at 10.11, down from 10.60. Of course, I never do the alcoholic calculation, you can figure that out yourself. No, actually, I do sometimes. Um, all Chevalier. Uh, I think I already went over the hops, but for your edification and for you, you don't care. Um, <laughs> 1.25 on target, bittering. Two ounces of uh, Kent Golding's uh, for the hop stand, and then it cooled down a little bit, and then two ounces of Fuggles. So, the question on the table is, does the hop stand give this type of beer some additional flavor and or aroma? And sort of the one of the reasons I was doing this is because my Italian Pilsner did not have the aroma that I wanted. Could I have gotten a better aroma if I were doing a hop stand with those German hops? That was sort of the experiment. When you drink this beer, do you get some weird, hoppy, spicy flavors? Well, I, I definitely get the Fuggles. Um... Not weird, but like... I mean, I smell the fuggles right off the bat. You do? Yes. Um, Are you fuggle sensitive? Yeah, I am fuggle sensitive. That's actually. pretty good. Um, one of the beers that I brew all the time back in Milwaukee is a fuggle smash. Oh, um, so that I've, I've brewed that beer probably six times now, and I actually uh, won a first place um, a ribbon for my fuggle smash. What's the malt? Uh, Marisauter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Cool. Fuggles, oh, that's cool. Fuggles is a, I also have Fuggle hops growing in my backyard, so... Fuggle in A. Yeah, yeah, Fuggle A. I, uh, Fuggle A. <laughs> I, um, yes, exactly. I'm not getting the hop aroma out of this beer like I do when I do some hop stands with American hops. However, I feel like it has quite a spicy flavor. Yes, it's very spicy. I almost very. feel like it has a citrusy flavor. You do? Mm -hmm. I don't... I'm not getting as strong of a spice. This what time. were you saying another time you had it? You were listening that it off some like spices. Cloves. cloves. Mm -hmm. Were you saying things like lavender? Yeah, probably. I was just listing off all the herbs in my garden. Oh, you were. <laughs> Might be a little Camomile. lemony or yeah, lemony? I feel or yeah, I feel lemony. like orange maybe, but maybe lemony. Yeah, I get yeah. a little lemon. Perhaps uh, almost for the like citrus. A tea. Yeah. I'm not getting as much orange because you know tonight. Yeah. Tonight they're all gray. It is kind of like a well, like tonight a black we tea. had that that Berliner Weiss and that mm. was very orange. They make beers with the the tea actually. Mm. They use Kombucha. tea, um, no, like they use tea leaves and beer, and mm. it almost does have kind of. I do feel that it has um, a more complex flavor than it definitely would if I just used the bittering hop. Right. And that right. was it, because you're not getting all those weird flavors from mm -hmm. the yeast. You're not getting it from the malt. So while I am not getting, no, you are picking up on a fuggle aroma, um, I'm not getting a lot of hop aroma. And I almost wonder if that has anything to do with the types of acids in these hops or the strength of the acids or some sort of combination. Excuse me. When you do the hop stand, it extracts those aromas in higher alpha acid hops, different kinds of American hops that are really aromatic. And these like, English hops that are kind of, you know, 5% alpha acid or wherever they are, like, maybe it just doesn't pull off those aromas. But it does pull off some weird flavors. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not, I'm not sure about weird flavors. Why do I keep I, saying I, weird? I, I, Different. I'm not, yeah. well, I'm not used to orange it's, and solvent beer. It's unique, oh, you but are. I have to tell you, this beer is very um, clean. There's no off flavors that I can detect on yeah. this beer. No, I think it's... I appreciate that. I mean, I think it's a, it's a well-made beer, but um, it, it is different. It's a little different. It has... Did you get that? Did you get that uh, sniff off camera? Definitely. There, there's, oh, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a bittering um, agent going on here. I, there's definitely... When I taste... Yeah. No, when I taste this beer right bitter. from the... Yeah, it's very it's bitter. bitter. Yep. It's got some... It's, uh, it's, it's very, very close, in my opinion, to almost an IPA. It has enough... That's why it has enough it. hops in there that that literally makes me feel like I'm like doing a trip wall and, and you're doing <laughs> yeah. like yeah I know I'm I'm, I'm sipping it because I'm, I'm wait, trying to I'm, I'm no, trying I'm, to give you a you know a, I guess my opinion of this beer it's it's hoppy um, but right. there's also a, a, a floral character to the smell and that's where I'm getting the fuggles I'm, like I said I'm very sensitive to fuggles. Because I brew Fuggles, with that, I brew with that uh, that hop all the time, I, so I'm very familiar with it. Right. I think that you do also get bitterness from the hop stand, and that was mm -hmm. partially intentional because the Chevalier malt is kind of sweet, and I wanted to balance it. Yes. Um, I don't know. It's oddly balanced because the bitterness is there. It's kind of. Well, I also get a biscuity um, flavor from the beer, also. A tiny bit of raisin. I'm getting a little raisin from this, but we could just sit here and roll this camera, and we would get like all the flavors. Yeah, we're gonna get. Of this yeah. But it tastes like crude. Lucky it tastes charms. Like crude. But I am getting a little bit of raisin from this. I'm getting a Delta cracker. <laughs> Delta cracker. Delta graham <laughs> cracker. <laughs> anyway, the point I would like to make is the hop stand with these types of hops does give some unique character, yes. I believe. This beer would definitely not taste like this if I would not have done that. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know, but uh, comment away with your experiences with doing this kind of thing. I, if I do the Italian pills again, I probably will do a hop stand because the dry hop did not work for me, so I would at least try the hop stand and see if I got different flavors, maybe some different aromas. That beer is now gone. R.I.P. Italian pills, version one. And uh, thank you guys for tasting the beer. I don't mean to be cutting you off. I just feel like uh, wrap it up, you know, Dave Chappelle. You know what I'm saying? Wrap it up. Yeah. I'll drink a six pack of this. There you go. Hey, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Catch you later. Just when you thought the video was over. The beer that'll never end. The video that will never end. Um, Chip was sneezy. Less That's his. Seven Dwarfs name. Yep. Um, <laughs> he was, yeah, so he didn't want to be on camera, and but he said to me, bring your camera over later and we'll do a, you know, real talk, quick thing. Anyway, this was this hop stand beer, as it's been discussed, and, uh, you yeah. know, d d does it, do you think it gets some character from that? Mm hmm. I haven't drank this beer for a minute. Yeah, I've had it a couple times over its life, and it's been cool to have because you don't get many English IPAs but Elsa and I have worked for Summit which made like an yeah, award winning nice the GABF medal um, so we kind of miss it it was called True Brit and it's there are times where I'm like man I wish that was still made because sometimes you want to just get away from pale fruit bomb hazy you want to get back to like kind of like that that old school IPA or even like some people would call this kind of like an American early American because England yeah, was the like the Sierra Nevada <laughs> Pale Ale. Right, right. Eighties. We're just hell, yeah. Kind so of a little thing. more body, a little more caramel, a little more toast. You know, it's even Biscuit. drinking like I get the hop bitterness and the flavor still even right mm -hmm. now, but um, the Chevalier sweetness is even coming through. That's all what it all is right, right now. All Chevalier. I believe so. Yeah, no, I feel like you get a lot of hops, stone fruit hops. Some East cherry. Kent, I think it was East Kent Goldings and Fuggles. I think is what I. Man, earthy. That's pretty impressive for that bitterness for just a hop stand. Um, I probably or did. I did. Did um, I probably did one ounce, I believe, of some bittering hop. I, I'm pretty sure. It tastes fugly. Yeah. 
Yeah, Barry said he was. He thought he was getting the Fuggle character. Because he makes a smash with Fuggle, so he's very that's what he in said. tune to the Fuggle. That's what he said. Maybe I should have watched that video before we did this. Well, it's not posted yet. But anywho, <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess the takeaway I think is uh, using those types of hops in a hop stand is not something I've really heard a lot about, and yeah. I do think it contributes a uh, noticeable character. Maybe you've invented something. Wow. Some of the Don't Italian so. style Pilsner, the well, English style IPA. No, I'm gonna try <laughs> 2. to. 2.0. I'm gonna, yes. Part of the, I think I talked about it, but part of my mm. goal was to test doing this with these hops, to then maybe try the Italian style Pilsner doing a hop stand also sometime. Oh yeah. Okay. And see how that changes the character of that beer instead of doing this insane dry hop that I did that didn't really give me the hop aroma that I thought it should. This definitely has hot presence and that Chevalier malt I know from past experience is is a sweetness you have to overcome with something. So right. I'm thinking bitterness hops alone would not have done it. I think your hop stand hops are creating that really nice layer. It is interesting because it hits you sweet but then there is quite a bit of bitterness that is bordering on almost too much. I mean it's it's pretty bitter. Anyway, I think that's good, right? Yeah. Any final thoughts? Nope. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. It's Dino! <laughs> blah, blah, blah.